Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about episode 3 of What If. This one is called What If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes. This is Disney's uh, Marvel animated show, which I've been doing week to week. Uh, I finally got to see it tonight with a friend. We enjoyed it a lot. And I'll give some brief uh, thoughts on it. First off, I'm really liking some of the styles they're choosing for the animation. They're keeping it similar, but you can tell some little differences here and there. And I'm really enjoying it. This episode was a, a dark one and a really interesting whodunit. And it was a pacing issue for me. Not an issue, it's something I noticed that they tried. Where they tried to do... Uh, an action scene going on with two different parts of the world. I thought it was pretty good, but I, I noted it as something that might be a little bit, uh, you know, noticeable to people and maybe a little jarring. Again, I am slightly just a little annoyed. I'm nitpicking, I'm just joking, that the Watcher constantly looks like Eternity. I want to see the Watcher in all his glory, what he really looks like as he's depicted in the comics or... Otherwise, but at least, you know, see him, not just his stars in a field in the background. So getting to the story of what if the world lost its mightiest heroes, this is sort of a recap of some of the movies. So Thor's movie, and there's a brief scene from like the Iron Man movie, and they take portions of them and put a twist on them. So... They go to recruit Iron Man for, um, oh, this will be spoilers, you know, this is, I just watched it, but, in warnings in any case. They go to Tony Stark to, um, recruit him as Iron Man, they go to help him, inject him, and he winds up dying. And as they focus on parts of those movies like Thor and the Hulk, uh, the Incredible Hulk, they take portions of him and show a little twist on how they're killed, and you're wondering what's going on, who's doing this, and there are, you know, um, cause and effect starts to happen, where because some of the heroes are dead, uh, what would happen? So, if, if Thor is killed on Earth, well, Asgard's gonna come and see what the fuck's going on, which was really cool, a little twist, and Loki comes with Sif and uh, an Asgardian army, and, you know, I, I, at first I was thinking, where's Cap? Because Cap's not really highlighted on this. Uh, to the, uh, well, he's not at all, really, until his shield is seen at the end. But I won't give away the main plot twist and plot reveal. But there's a whodunit aspect where Nick Fury's going around trying to recruit the heroes with Natasha, Black Widow. As you kind of see in the movies, and they take, like I said, portions of it. And every time he goes to recruit somebody, they die. And then we got Hawkeye, and it's mysterious. Uh, they don't know how it's happening. They go to try to get help, or, you know, in a way, try to get help. And the story progresses that way with some dark tones, some really serious um, levels of dialogue. And I was, like, pretty interested. I found myself wondering who was doing it, although I think I guessed it pretty quick. Uh, me and my friend were talking about it here and there because I paused it once or twice just to, uh, you know, write my thoughts about, you know, where my brain was going at the time. And I think that's a good indication of the show. Uh, would I say it's the best out of the three? Uh, maybe. Uh, I'm going to say I like it better than the second one. And I've done a podcast on the first two. I think the first one's still the best. But this one is really interesting to me. This is something I will watch again. And thinking about it that way, um, as I watch one and two, we're doing them week to week podcast. Uh, I do weekends, I do usually two, or sometimes, it depends on my schedule. And I didn't really keep in my mind when I watched one and did the podcast on it, watched it again, um, you know, to get my thoughts finalized. Same with the second one. And I. I think this is the one I want to watch again. I don't know if that makes it better. More interesting little things you miss. Uh, 
little clues about who it was. Oh, I didn't notice that. Now, in the end, it's a big reveal, and is some pretty cool action and a, another twist that goes on. I mean, the show is really trying and throwing things at you about the what if scenarios. This one seems a real interesting one to me. I like how they took the movies and took portions of it. And oh, I know that scene. And my friend was like, "Oh, remember that location?" I'm like, "Oh shit, yeah." You know, and they try to show what what happens when things go differently and the effects it has on the world, the consequences of uh, Hawkeye dying or, or what happens in the Black Widow as she's you know investigating because she's the first one arrested because as she injects Tony which supposedly is something to help him with his, uh, I think it takes place around Iron Man 2, where he's got that, it's like going to kill him because it's spreading throughout his body, so they give him an injection, it's supposed to help him, and it doesn't, he just drops dead. And like I said, uh, the reveal at the end, I thought was interesting, I thought using the main voice actors is really, really good way to get people into the show. Now I can say all of them, because I didn't do a real deep dive, but, when you immediately hear Coulson's voice and you know it's him, it puts a smile on my face. I'm a big fan of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I totally recommend that show from season one to season seven, the last season. I do admit the beginning's a little rocky, but here we got um, a lot of things going on, and I really enjoyed it. I think there's a real interesting place this can go. And me and my friend were also having a conversation about where they might come back to visit things. Like, would there be an interlocking story? So let's say at the end of this, you see Cap Shield in the ice. Well, what if it was Captain Peggy Carter's shield, which had, I think, the UK or British symbol on it? Like, will they interconnect things? Will they come back in another season and do a part two to uh, what if T'Challa was Star-Lord? Or, um, you know, Peggy Carter's story and continue it. I'm not sure what they plan. I think it's like 16 episodes per season. The writing is pretty good. Um, and I like the weight the animation carries with the sound. Now, I can't say I noticed it that much on this one. But it's something that I'm noticing enough that it keeps me um, really grounded in the episode. Like I was describing about things feel like they have weight with the right sound and the right animation the movements of the character. This one had a little more, uh, what is it, cell shading type animation, but I was impressed. I liked it. Uh, like I said, there was a little bit of a um, jarring moment where they're doing a cutting between Asgard attacking Earth because Do Thor is fucking dead and Nick Fury and Loki are trying to have a, an agreement, but Loki opens the chest of fucking winter or something. And then you have the Hulk being shot. He turns into the Hulk and he starts rampaging. And they're cutting between. I'm going to say that one might be the weak point here. Whereas in T'Challa's story, I wasn't really interested in the things that were going on in the episode. And of T'Challa being Black Panther and that in the story in general. This one, I liked the writing more. I was more interested. I was more thinking of what was going on. Who was the uh, person committing these? And I guess in that way, it works. And being critical, I could see this being something people don't agree on a lot. Maybe one of those things that's, um, you know, loved and hated. Well, not really hated. I mean, I don't hate this. Hate could you hate an episode, but... You know, you're starting off, you're killing characters, and it carries through to the end, and it's not like it's a surprise, and everybody goes, oh, we're okay. So in that case, it's kind of deep, it's kind of dark, it got a, a tone to it that doesn't really have much levity, and in the cartoon, you kind of, you know, expect the inner animation. This is kind of a good blend. Um, they're not doing total obscene stuff like Modoc, which I fucking love. Um, and different tones seem to work trying to blend T'Challa with the Guardians of the Galaxy. I, and I appreciated what they tried to do with it. It was just one of those episodes that weren't for me. 
This one I think is more for me. I like the uh, way it was put together. I kind of enjoyed seeing some of the twists they put in here. Um, brutal ways of, you know, you're just killing people. And and you're kind of wondering. Like I said, I might have guessed it. And maybe I, we took a couple of guesses here. And they're like, oh, what we think it is. And one of them was right. Even that, it was just really good dialogue. And when it was revealed, I was interested. And then there was another little kind of twist they play at the end. And they do it pretty well. Um, you know, this is a quick one because I just watched it with a friend. Um, and like I said, I kind of see it as something I want to watch again. And I don't think I thought that way with the first two. You know, I'm getting into this routine and I'm doing two podcasts a week. And I think, oh, you know what? I always wanted to do something weekly and just give my surface thoughts on what I just watched. And, you know, you, you're planning it that way. And, you know, sometimes your schedule is busy or not. And because I was actually doing a five a week and I wanted to see what my limit was. And I went down to four then three. And it seemed like three was okay. Then I started doing a lot of online role playing and dungeon mastering and all that stuff. And I went down to two. And that's where I kind of stayed comfortable where you don't feel stressed. But doing the third one, I keep seeing myself, you know, thinking about what my next podcast is going to be, doing an outline. And I didn't think about watching the show again. It's like kind of gone and out of my my view. This one is the episode so far that I want to watch again. I don't know if that's a really good indication. And like I said, in the other one, the other episode wasn't for me. Maybe this one is for me. Maybe that's the charm of the show. You're going to see so many twists and so many different things. And even if they're somewhat predictable, because... I'm a real big nerd, and I know so much of the law. I, I sort of picked up on it a little bit in the beginning, and then it solidified for me. Where I was like, oh, I know definitely. It didn't harm the, sh the show to, for me, the episode. I was really into it, and I think, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, could this be my favorite one so far? Hey, the, 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 gung, the, the, the optimism of the first one really got me. The second one, the story lost me. I wasn't really interested. And this one's a dog told me it was serious, and I kind of enjoyed it. And you know what? I'm now I'm thinking about the bias and the Coulson. Things like that really get me. When I hear voices that I immediately know it's them, I think it really lends weight to it. And like I've said, for the first couple of episodes, when you put the right sound, a good voice, excellent animation, and even if you're putting little different twists on it or using more of one style, it seems to be working for me. I'm really enjoying it. I'm interested week to week, and I'm actually excited about the next episode. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I've read tons of the What If comics. I've been a fan for so long, so there's that aspect to it, too. And I don't know if I've explained this in uh, the other ones, but I remember the comics from being a child. And I have some in my, in one, there's a couple in my bathroom, I think. I keep a stack in there. I think it's what, one is, what if the impossible man got the Infinity Gauntlet? <laughs> and, um, what was it, what if, it was another what if, I think. I forgot what it was. Anyway. I love the concept of the comic. I really enjoyed it. I even like DC's Elseworld, and I brought these things up. I like different twists on it. And it's a way you can kill the characters, get away with it, and just say hey, it's a different universe. It's uh, just another way of looking at how things could have went. Again, the narration with the watch is excellent. I like everything the way it went. I, I could see people... Uh, finding more flaws in this episode because of the way it was done, like I explained here and there. And this is still like my first impressions. I'm, I just watched it with a friend. He just left. And I, I, I think I could see that. I think there's a part of me that likes Green Lantern movie, but it's not going to argue that it's not a good movie. I'm not going to, you know, try to defend it critically. But, and I think that's the joy of these things. What if episode three now, when you look at the name of it, what if the world lost its mightiest heroes? And you look at some of the stuff going on, the voice casting, the acting. I think it's really, uh, you know, I think it's a good notch. I think it's one of the good episodes. I don't know if it's critically really good. Like I said, this is just my feelings. I was really into it. And I guess that sums it up. I, um... I can look real quick if there's a, um, 
you know, I did. Like I said, he just left. I just turned on the mic. Man, I think I'll be finished here. I like the episode. Give it a shot. Give the series a shot. Go back, watch episode one. And this is something great because as it is now, unless they go with my idea that they might connect things, you never have to worry about what episode you're catching. I think that's a good thing, right? Watch season one, episode five, then one, then three. Then It's not going to matter because each one's a separate little story and a twist and a variation of what happened in the comics. And for people who don't know the comics, I, I can imagine what that's like, too. I don't even know what the story originally was, and they're going to give you a little hint. In the comics, it was a little more clear. Here, it might be a little more, you know, artistically rendered and, you know, interpreted. And I guess that's it. Episode 3, What If the World Lost Its Mightiest Heroes? Hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. I'll talk to you all later.